Radical. Hey there guys, if friends are here and welcome to uh, this new series I'm doing, which is on the Simpsons Hit and Run. It is obviously a Simpsons licensed game. I don't know why I was hiding it for so long. I mean, it kind of said it on the first screen there, but oh well. In any case, we'll just... You better be loading. Quite the opening cutscene there. Anyway, as I was saying, this is a Simpsons licensed game, obviously. We have the classic members of the family, and uh, all of them, except for Maggie, of course, are uh, playable in the main game. So, Homer. You can also see other characters show up every now and then, like Barney. Um, before I start the game proper, I do need to give some explanation. So, yeah, you can play as the. Four main members of the family, Homer, Marge, Bart, and uh, Lisa. Ten I guess technically you can control some of the other characters if they're driving cars like Abe, as we'll see. But, eh, that's later. That's a technicality. And then, you can also play as a Pooh as well. Settle down, Abe. But, um, yeah. As for gameplay-wise, it's, uh... The best way it can be described is like a Grand Theft Auto clone, minus the shooting and the most of the killing. There are a few deaths in the game, but they're they're story-wise. You can't actually kill in the game, but maybe we should talk about that once we get into actual gameplay. I will say right off the bat, if you're uh, expecting... Let's check real quick. So we have the game introduction and level 1 introduction. Don't do that. I shouldn't have viewed the credits. We'll save that. Sound should be stereo. No, I want stereo like that. And then controller. Obviously, you can see I am playing this on. Uh, you can see the controls for both modes here, but we'll go on it. I am playing this on the GameCube controller or on the GameCube, so you might hear some clacking. Though I probably shouldn't have done that on the screen. That that was a bad decision. Anyway, the point I was getting to. Um, if you're expecting, uh, like, a diehard Simpsons fan to be playing uh, this game, that's not me. I very watch The Simpsons on a very infrequent basis. I don't really get a lot of the jokes and all that stuff. If you want someone who is a bit big Simpsons fan to be playing through the game, let me redirect you over towards uh, Slim Kirby. He both has a playthrough from 2009, I think, in which he did the game, which was actually how I found out about his channel. But he's a huge, huge Simpsons fan, so he can spot all the references left and right laugh at the humor that sort of uh, stuff well if you wouldn't keep on interrupting me while I'm trying to explain stuff so I'll link uh, both his old uh, playthrough from 2009 in the description which of course is complete it's not a 100% version of the game but um, as of the previous week that I recording this the previous weekend he uh, actually just started a replay of the series where he is going to be doing 100% so uh, you can check out either of those. I highly recommend it from him. Aside from him just being a good Simpsons fan, he's also just straight up very good. 
we'll get into all this later. Yeah. That's later. I'm mainly just doing this as a fan of the game itself, because it, it's a surprisingly good game. Like, as much as you think a Simpsons ripoff of GTA sounds weird, it, it's actually very good. But this will be a 100% playthrough, and uh, I'm not going to be... Like, if you're watching both me and Slim Kirby's at the same time, or either one, the way he's doing it is he's doing the story missions first, and then going for the extra collectible stuff. According to what I could tell, anyways. I'm going to be, like, interspersing it. I'm going to do one or two story missions an episode, and then, uh, try and do some extra stuff for 100% in the filler time. I'm going to try and keep these episodes at all... I'm going to try and keep these episodes at only about, uh, 25, 20 to 30 minutes or so in that interval. But, this, this first episode might be a little off, just because the timer is a bit weird, but... So we don't delay, we'll just hit new game and see what happens. Hey, hey! I'm endorsing a new cola, kids! And this one isn't poisonous to anybody! That we know of. New and improved Buzz Cola is made from only the finest sugars and waters. Plus, it has a special ingredient, too hot, for the FDA. It'll give you the get up and go you need to do all the pathetic stuff you have to do. Try new improved Buzz Cola! Cola. Must get buzz cola. Well, right off the bat, you can see two of the selling points about this game. Local man ruins hot dog eating contest disqualified for vomiting. So 90% of video games start with easy tutorial level. So each level begins with like that magazine shot that gives you a basic layout of what hap of All what'll right, be going everyone. on in the level. Uh, Palmer. I mean, Palmer. Use the control stick to move around. This is called walking. Press the A button to jump and hold down the X button to run. Anytime you're in the air, hit jump again to get a little extra push. All right, so Bart's going to be giving us our tutorials, as you can see right there. You can actually apparently use the D-pad to move. I never do that. This is Press a the 3D. Press the button to get in the car. Dang it, Bart. Don't take all day. This is a tutorial. I'm going to take as long as I want. And you can disable those right there off the bat if you so desire. Oh my god. Yeah, great. Those shiny things are called coins. Whenever you get enough of those, you can get a cool surprise. So as I was saying, it's a 3D space that you can explore around. And since it is a GT clone, it's more of a sandbox. There aren't really that many side things to do, though. Though, uh, that doesn't really matter. You do have main missions to do, like what would happen if we went over and talked to Marge over there. So these coins, you pick them up collect them buy stuff with them the stuff is very expensive so keep that in mind a bunch of these scattered in oh my each god level. little surprises are hidden inside each one be sure to come back again to see if there's something you missed so yeah blue sparkly things like this these are uh, gags there's a certain number of gags in each level uh you can check the level progress here that's all the collectible stuff you have uh to complete and it gives you a level complete level down at the bottom Uh, the blue sparkly things like this, these are gags, mess with them, something happens, and then oftentimes they skirt a, spurt out a coin like that. And come over here, more coins. Another gag with the grill. Another one with the tiki, stuff like that. If the blue sparkle disappears, that's how you know you uh, did it properly. Just make sure you collect your coins, because if you're going for 100%, God knows you'll need every single last one of them. You can re redo some of them, but it doesn't really serve a purpose. Except just for being thorough, I guess. And there's another collectible we have up here. These there's trading cards. There's cards hidden all over Springfield. Find the other ones and sweet reward is yours for the taking. If you want to take a closer look at the cards, you can see them in the pause menu. And don't get your stingy fingers on them, fatty. So as Bart s rudely said, homemade football. All those cards are a very specific reference to stuff from The Simpsons, which again, Slim explains, up, I don't know. Psycho. So it begins. Alright, so maybe I should turn Bart off, because he's interrupting the gameplay flow a lot. But the collector cards, they are a very specific reference to the Simpsons. I get none of them, but oh well. There's a different set for each level. There's always, what, s yeah, seven. There's a different set for each level, and you can look at them in depth here. They actually give you the episode information right off the bat there, with like a little quote at the bottom. 
so or quotes at the bottom so with a description so yeah this game's very thorough also earlier you might have saw the some of the main appeals of the game it has the same uh, voice the same voice crew as the show itself and um you also might notice that the comedy is very similar that's because both the story and the dialogue was also written by writers from the simpsons also we destroyed right there you saw that um you can see our radar at the bottom there that gives a very crude uh, diagram of the area and it has an indication for our objective homer of course or your player character i guess you should say is the is the white arrow um your car is the blue arrow or your most recent car i should say is the blue arrow your objective it gives you a little wedge to go over to it with that flashing blue circle indicating what the objective actually is and uh also you run by holding down yeah by holding down x bart didn't explain that you can attack by pressing b you can do a jump attack jump attack a ground attack or if you double jump and attack you can ground pound it doesn't really serve much purpose they all basically are the same here's another gag Uh oh so here we have a wasp why these things have turned up all over Jesus. they always seem to turn up whenever something exciting happens I don't know what they are but violence is always an appropriate response in the face of the unknown well Bart gives us some good advice for the game here's a wasp camera over here as it said it was describing how to attack it oh you can destroy him from the ground actually I wasn't expecting that you can destroy him and get a lot of coins the problem is they don't respawn so, uh, you gotta do that. As you can see from the level progress earlier, they are collectible. I think Slim said there's 20 in each level, so we'll roll with that. I'll just assume he's correct on that. And, uh, we're going to ignore these boxes for now. Or, maybe I shouldn't. Eh. I've done enough explaining for now. Anyway, the... You might notice, like, uh, on, there's a circle bar thing surrounding the radar that I was talking about earlier. Destroy stuff and it starts filling up little by little. That's because uh, if you fill it up too much, it's a replacement for GTA's uh, star system. Once it goes past, uh, or once it completely fills up, you'll have the police on you. And you either have to... Wow, that went flying. And you either have to outrun the police or get caught by them and pay a fine. They don't kill you, at least. So, this is a surprisingly more tame version of GTA. Which, I, you wouldn't really think the Simpsons version of anything would be more tame. But you can see it right there, how uh, it starts filling up. Run over and destroy too much stuff, and uh, you're in a load of trouble. Actually, oh, I can show it off right here. You can also kick escaping. you can also kick random civilians. That's a great way to fill it up. Why did you do that? Sorry, it had to be a little kid, but oh well. Fill it up there, and it'll give you a warning. Fill it up. Uh, yes. Hit and run. Police will come after you. They'll spawn out of literally nowhere. So you just got to be careful. They're not doing a very... Are they in the backyard? Yeah, they're not always the smartest at finding you. So there's that. Like, I'm standing completely still and they won't catch me. Because he spawned in the backyard. And see? It went down because I avoided the police for long enough. And of course, if you run over more stuff while you're avoiding the police, then uh, they'll start hitting you again. But if you get caught, you pay a 50 coin fine, so... And if you do have the, min like, below the number, right like, if I got caught right now, they would just take the 48 coins I have. I it wouldn't affect me any more than that. It's not like you lose if you uh, don't have the 50 coins to pay. But that's what happens. Just something to be careful for. It's something that'll uh, disrupt you during the missions. And there was something else that I was going to mention, but I'm sort of blanking on it. Uh, we'll just talk to Marge for now. Homie, somebody ate every dessert in the house. I need you to run to the store and pick up some of that ice cream with the miniature pies in it. Well, it must have been one of our kids. Probably Millhouse. Again, the humor is very on point with the show. Alright, so this mission, the tutorial mission, fun fact. It is the only mission in the game that cannot be replayed. Every other mission, you can restart and at your will once you beat it and uh, replay it to your heart's content this is the one exception once you do this tutorial you have to start up a new save file to do it again 
So our goal is to go to the Quickie Mart and purchase some ice cream and cola. And even if you do skip Bart's tutorials, you do still have to do this. So keep that in mind. And purchase some ice cream and cola. And it has like a little diagram to basically outline the mission for you, which is a really cool thing. So you see our objective change, we have to hop in the car. If this lady will move out from Here's the way. Press the A button to accelerate and use the control stick to steer. The X button is your brake in reverse, and the B button is your handbrake. You know, just like every driving game ever. Bart's on point with this stuff. So we do that, hop in, and uh, B is just brake, but X is also re Whoops, didn't mean to do that. X is also reverse, so keep that in mind. And then you, I just found out when I was test recording this, you can also use the shoulder buttons. In that case, R is accelerate, B is, or left is reverse. So, you can do that. So, as you can see, you can drive along. And you can run over stuff like telephone poles, grab stuff, mailboxes, stop signs, and other cars. You can destroy other cars, and people for that matter. You can do that. Uh, the thing is, though, in this game, your cars aren't invincible. They do have a limit. In fact, let me keep on running into stuff to show it off just I probably shouldn't get caught by the police all right let me show how you can destroy both other cars and what you and the one you drive hmm let me try and squish him all right no I was supposed to grab the coin from that all right well we got to the quick mart at least as you can see, we're taking more damage, and the car is starting to fall apart. Like, the doors are flying open, the trunk, and our hood's getting messed up. Alright, so you see that car over there is smoking. Let me, uh, wait for a moment, because if you destroy cars, you get a hefty boost to that, uh, hit-and-run meter over there. I think that's what it's officially called, so watch out. No, not that time. The darker the smoke gets, the closer it is to exploding. And there we go. Destroy it, and you can collect, uh some money from it though you as i said you do get a hefty fine to uh or a hefty penalty to your hit and run meter from anybody you see on the street we simpsons have done a lot for springfield so it's okay to get something back all right that wasn't exactly the thing i was expecting to get there so what you can do with any car in the game instead of stealing them like you would in grand theft auto you can hitchhike though if you blow it up you just take the car for yourself you can also destroy the you can also just drive the chassis of any destroyed car like this, except it's painfully slow, has bad steering, and uh, it makes an incredibly grating noise. So, I would recommend against it. As I said, you can hitchhike with any cars. Actually, let's not do that one. Let's do this one. Alright, so... No, switch to the front view. There we go. You can see Homer actually isn't driving. There's still someone else driving, hence why it's uh, hitchhiking and not just theft. So, keep that in mind. However, the thing with using the generic cars on the road like this is that they're never very good. Almost always the cars, um... Settle down. As, almost always the uh, car that you, uh... That you... Your, one of your main cars, as I'll show in just a second, is uh, better suited for the job. These just are generally very poor. And I would only use them basically to get to a location where you can get your car. Alright, so, you, there's a bunch of other cars that you can get, as you can see here. Fortunately, it's not spoiling all of them for us, only the level 1 ones. But, uh, any car that you've unlocked, you can call from a telephone booth, even if, or, or a phone booth, even if you have destroyed it. So, uh, somehow it still works. Actually, I can show that off in just a second. And that does have a damage percentage on the car. Of course, once it gets 100, it's destroyed. And you can see that for each car over here. To repair damage, also let me show what happens that you can destroy a telephone booth right there. Since the phone's still hang dangling there, apparently, that's how you can still use it. So it doesn't really matter. Also, most of... Oh, I was about to say. Most of the time, they're those things are marked on the map. But I guess not if uh, it's part of a tutorial mission. So go with that oftentimes civilians will dodge out of the way so there's that uh there's a wasp up there collecting wrenches fixes your car yeah as bart said wrenches fix your car it'll restore the car you're driving back to 100 percent if you hop out of the car and collect a wrench which is something that you can also do it'll uh 
restore the previous car you were in back to full health. So if it was a civilian's car that you were hitchhiking in, those will also go to full health. So... You can go inside certain buildings by pressing the Y button. <sighs> Why did I agree to do this stupid tutorial? It is so boring. Being a bit too self-referential there, Bart. But anyway, here we are inside. We'll continue on with the actual tutorial. Oh god, snake's back there. You don't... You don't care about the mugging going on back there? That wasn't a mugging, that was a robbery. To be technical, that was with use of deadly force, so... Robbery. Hey, Apu, give me a cola and I need another bucket of ice cream with mini pies. What happened to the ice cream with mini pies your wife bought this morning? I probably ate it. I don't remember stuff too good. Well, here's our collectible. And we completed the mission right off the bat. Alright, so... Here's the beginning of the next proper mission. Again, we just completed the tutorial, so... That's the last time we gotta do that. There are arrows also guiding you towards your directions if you're not familiar with the map. So, that's good. I don't know if I mentioned it before, I have 100%ed this game, so I'm pretty familiar with it, all things considered. Sorry, bud. Alright, so Marge is over here. Unfortunately, our mailbox kind of got in the way. Let's kick that out of frame. Homie, Lisa left for school without her science project. Can you get it to her? Oh, do I have to? You can drop it off on the way to work. And I have to go to work? Alright, so the first proper mission of level one, SMRT. Race principal Skinner to the school and give Lisa her it's science project. So there's the science project. Also, you might notice once a thing is destroyed on the ground, it doesn't cause you any, or an object, I should say, on the ground. It doesn't cause you any more trouble to kick it around or drive over it or whatever. Uh, it will. People, if you hit people repeatedly, that will still cause harm. So come over here. And uh, Principal Skinner's up there, and we have to beat him. Fortunately, there's shortcuts that you can use, usually denoted by crusty glass over there that you can destroy. Destroying crusty glass, I believe... Oh, I can't check right now. I do believe destroying all the crusty glass in a level is one of the uh, requirements for 100%ing it. Not all at once, it just remembers. And um, also do it because it'll give you coins, and during races like this, it's a nice shortcut. But another shortcut, like over here, is drive up this ladder and fly off. Just make sure you don't run into stuff like I am, because that'll cause problems. Also, I'm not I'm usually not very good at racing games, even I have the even if I have played this before, again, I'm still I'll show off the level properly when we're driving back. Test complete, enter the school, so now we don't have to worry about principal scanner. But um Yeah, I'm not the best at racing games in general, even if I am a bit experienced with this one. Because uh my general tendency, as I think most people are with racing games, is to just hold down accelerate and don't take your finger off of it no matter what you do, even if it's going to screw you over more in the long run. Because, yeah. I'm just not the smartest. Also, okay, I thought it froze there. I was concerned. Ralph's back there. Thanks for bringing me my model of the digestive system. Hey, where's the gallbladder? I get hungry and... It was a fig. It was modeling clay. Oh. By the way, Dad, Mom called. She says she needs to talk to you at home before you go to work. Oh! Uh, king of the world! Alright, so that's another level down. And now uh, we have to drive back to the Simpsons house to start our next objective. Over here is a... Um, a race. Do you need to really put okay. the hammer down and drive? You can always enter these time trial races. They cost a little to enter, but they have a mucho dinero payoff. So essentially what this is, is gambling. If, um... It's essentially a wager race where you bet coins to potentially win more. Also, there's weird idle animations. I'm not going to show that off right now. Uh, you don't have to do those to 100%. Technically, you don't have to do those to 100% it, but... If you are 100% in towards the end game, you'll have to grind out some coins for sure. Sorry. 
You can also honk your horn with the Z button, so that'll get people to run out of your way if you're concerned about the meter. I'll show off the proper way you're supposed to drive, because you'll be seeing the shortcuts basically all the time later on. Excuse, you dove in front of my car. And then here we have uh, the other type of races. These are actually... Millhouse, Nelson, and Ralph run a series of races around town. Complete all the races and you unlock a new vehicle. Well, what are you waiting for? Well, as Bart just described there, uh, there, there, the, 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 I cannot talk. This is the other type of race. Um, excuse you. These, uh, races, if you complete all three of them, you get a, a new card that you can only be unlocked by completing three of the, each of the three of these in a level. Here's a Ralph, and then, as I said, Millhouse and Nelson are the other ones. They're scattered around the level. So, just keep those in mind. Now, excuse me. No, no, no. No, no, no. Whatever. Sometimes it is good to cause a little mayhem, even if it builds your meter up, just because it helps collect coins. Like so. And then you can just get a wrench and be as good as new. Except for the meter. Just be careful about that. But this is roughly the way Springfield's supposed to be. Driving on it more properly. Also, cars were out of the way. Keep that in mind. Also, buses stop at stop signs. Keep that in mind. So, yeah. That's how you're supposed to do it. You can do fancy stuff with shortcuts most of the time. And, again, I'll mostly just be doing those by instinct. What's... Hmm, should I come... Should I start the next level? Maybe I'll show off this other mechanic over here. So you might have seen these earlier. These are, uh, boxes. Let me just... These are collectible, right? No? I thought they were. Oh. Well, officially they're not a collectible. But, uh, just taking them get you money. There's another problem. Like the wasp cameras, they don't respawn. Which is odd because these whole purpose is to give you money. There is a trick though. If uh, you hit it twice like that. But don't hit it a third time. Which is what will ultimately destroy it. Then uh, if you leave the level for another one. Like say level 2. Switch to that. Which is a different map. And then come back. These will be refilled to the regular 3. And then you can hit it twice. And get another batch of coins uh, again. Then repeat the trick. Odd infinitum. Until... Uh, you're satisfied with your coin count and that's how slim kirby's uh handling the coin grinding doing that trick since i found about it through him i'm not going to be using it i'm just going to be doing it the old-fashioned way like i did when i was a much younger kid anyway so is that all i have to do now let me check level progress again really so it does look like wasp cameras are the only thing. I swear you had to destroy all the crusty glass in a level 2, but apparently not. No, oh, I guess I could show off something else. We'll be driving back down. We'll hit check with you. The uh, civilian cars, they are different for each level. So if you go to level 2, you'll see different ones in here. Like, I think level 1 is the only one where this crusty glass truck shows up. And as you can see, this car has significantly worse acceleration than ours. So, yeah, maybe I should have taken the family sedan. Almost all of the uh, cars that you can order from the phone booth are cars from the actual show in one way or another. Which is a real interesting detail. There is a lot of detail put into this game, as you can note. And you have major Simpsons landmarks like uh, the Quickie Mart and uh, the Simpsons house. And then you have more minor ones as just background objects, like over here. And then the donut shop over there. Stuff like that. Lots of detail put into the game. But, come over here. And, uh, here are the, uh, Buzz Cola machines. They work much the same way, except they give you a few less coins than the crates. But, you, they work much the same way. Destroy them twice, or hit them twice, and then leave the level, return, and they'll be good as new. So, uh, you can see a dollar sign on the mini-map here, and uh, obviously the phone icon marks a phone booth. Come over here, and, uh... I have to go to the bathroom real bad! 
excuse you, Millhouse. And over, you might notice the dollar sign on the mini map. That's because over here we have costumes we can change into. So I think each level has a set of three different costumes for the uh, main character. Yeah, and of course they're all references to the show. This one's a bit of a more general reference considering it's literally just Homer in his underwear. Then Homer in a moo moo. And then Homer in his uh, chosen one outfit. I can't remember the name. Again, I'm not that good of a Simpsons fan. But. So those are the three costumes you can choose from. You can wear them whenever. So we'll actually do this one. Yeah, so you can run around, do this, do your missions in it. Whatever. And then uh, if you want to change back, just hop over here. And choose another outfit. There's no restrictions on what you can do with them. Generally, there are a few missions uh, that require you to be in a specific outfit to start them. And then if you want to change it to another outfit, you can just change back once you do start the mission. So. I don't get that. This thing always creeped me out when I was younger. I didn't like it. Freezer burn on my beard. Is it the future yet? He always just kind of creeped me out. I didn't like him. And then here's the silent alarm over here. Let's activate it. Because these are all gags, I believe. Things inside are with, that are gags usually aren't marked in blue. So keep that in mind. Wonderful silent alarm. And you can also talk to Apu, I think. What do you have that will tantalize my very discerning palate? Perhaps some surprisingly expensive penny candy will suit your needs. So yeah, you can't talk to NPCs like that. It doesn't make much of a difference though. Come over here to the ATM. Oh, shoot out money. And then, uh, there's, you can actually play a game over here. I think it's Larry the Looter that we end up playing. Yeah. Also, if you're squeamish about any sort of gore, turn away now. So yeah, there's that. Even if it is pixelated, that's still a bit much, which I can't believe that made it into a game with a T rating, I believe. So, uh, no, you have to do it from inside. Come over here and cholesterol is low. no. Give me a recharge. This battle chili there we go. Illegal in seven states. Well, turn that on, and that will explode, and that's another gag that'll give you a coin. But anyway, I just want to show that off before we hop into more missions in the next couple episodes. In any case, and uh, when you go to a phone booth, you can summon a car you've unlocked from anywhere, even no matter where it is on the map. Like, this was up by the house, call me? it, and it's right here. You back, and you can also see the stats over here. They're rated on a 5-star level, or with half-star increments, I guess. Uh, speed, obviously, that's its a maximum speed. Acceleration determines how fast it gets to that top speed. Toughness, I originally uh, thought that meant how much damage it does, but instead, uh, that actually determines how much damage getting hit will do, or hitting other objects will do to the car itself. So, like, uh, so, like, if we had the Plow King, running through a wall wouldn't do near as much damage as if, uh, we were in this Electaurus here. And, uh, this family sedan would be a bit of a middle ground and then hand handling is how easily it turns Can you the family sedan of course I'll i mean it's the only car we have right now but it's a good starter car so there's that also when we hop in here if i'm not mistaken if we go to options settings yeah you can change the camera all right so jump cameras you might notice Auto, off, navigation system on. Alright, so navigation system, I believe, must be the uh, arrows in the in the road, I believe. I think that's it, if I'm not mistaken. Or does it just turn off? It might turn off... Uh... Yeah, it looks like it turns off the uh, icons on the mini-map, like the phone and the dollar sign and stuff. So that's what 
navigation system does. It doesn't turn off the radar entirely, which is a little weird. It also might turn off the arrows on the roads. Don't want that. Jump camera is off. You can also change the camera of the car, so it's automatically set to far, but you can have the, it follow the car up close like this. Which is disorienting. Well, maybe navigation system doesn't mess with that. I'm not sure. I'll have to play with it some more. Let's turn this off for now. And we'll switch to bumper cam just to be even more disorienting. Look at how horrible this is. In any case, if you jump off jumps like that with a jump camera off, it'll just follow the car. Whereas, if I can show it off here, I promise I'll be done soon. We'll set it back to far. Just come over here. Do this jump one more time. Yeah, as you can see, there's a. It switches to a different camera when you go over um, preset jumps like that. Also, you might have seen it earlier when we were going over the fire truck. So yeah, if you don't like that and it's disorienting to you, especially during a mission, no, don't do that. Then you can turn it off. That's what jump camera does. I'll figure out what navigation system does in next episode. But otherwise, th this is. I'll probably keep it on, but otherwise these are the settings we'll uh, be rolling with for the rest of the series. And make sure you, sorry, make sure you grab these wrenches and fix up your car. In any case, that'll be all for this first episode of Let's Play The Simpsons Hit and Run. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.